another women's group one December. And I was talking about the Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Good evening. You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. We thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoy another exciting episode of our show.
give back to different people in the world. You can give back by doing nonprofit or partnering with a nonprofit. You can give back by collaborating with one another. So there's always a way to give. And you have to make it understand. You know, they always say, what's the alternative? What's the alternative motive that you have? Don't have a motive. The intent is always so that's the crown of glory. Those are the five crowns that I wanted to talk about. Although we have an invisible crown of glory that we wear all the time, yet it is not What's your crown? Which one of those crowns are you wearing? Crowns are the right. Think about it. I'm a transformational speaker. I'm all about what can we start doing right now to learn. So what do you think about what you talked about? Now, I have a young lady with me tonight that's my special guest. Oh, yes, my special guest. And she's just speaking to girl boss talk. She has, she's an author. She's just completed a phenomenal boot camp business. I'm going 
what folks have got to say. Yes, a number of things are happening in the world, and we're curious to see people's reactions to the things that are going on and all of that. So definitely uh, we're very excited about a number of the uh, things that are happening, including the Olympics. That's right, the Olympics are going on. I've actually been watching water polo and some other sports that I never thought that I would actually be watching on a regular basis. But I've been catching them, checking out what they're all about, and definitely learning more about them. So always great to have some amazing conversations going on and glad to see that y'all are here on the show checking out this episode of what we've got happening in this regard. So glad that y'all are checking out what's happening and look forward to y'all joining in as well. So definitely a number of things are going on in the world. People are still paying attention to the pandemic, still paying attention to a number of other things that are happening around, including, like I said, the Olympics and, of course, other news items, including how we're adjusting to the work environment. But, you know, I'm waiting for my partner, Dean, to come in. If he comes in or a guest, they don't come in. It might be an abbreviated version of our show. But we're going to see what we've got on tap and how this all plays out. And, of course, I'll come back with some more news stories as well. But definitely looking forward to a very engaging conversation. So hopefully y'all are tuning in and enjoying what you're hearing because we're always glad to have amazing guests on on a regular basis. But right now I'm going to get ready to do some a little bit of music. That's right. We'll have a musical bed while we wait to see if anybody shows up in the studio, or this might be a very abbreviated program, but we're going to play it by ear and see what goes on. But right now, let's hear a little bit of what uh, Dilla's got going on with that intro and outro. So let's check out a little bit of uh, Dilla. I'm 
know, you might have some what I call mock questions. And in life, that's what we have, even when it comes to a job. So when you are preparing for the, the queen or the uh,
let's take a break and uh, see what's going on in the world and around the world and what we can talk about in terms of news happening in the world and all of that. Because we know a number of things are happening around that folks may be interested in. They may even think about ways that they can get involved with a number of things that are happening in the community and all of that. Y'all know that I oftentimes will check in with LinkedIn and see what they've got going on in the sense of news items and all of that. So I'm going to go in here and see what's going on around the world. And, of course, if y'all are interested, y'all can give a call. The number to call is 646-668-8393. That's 646-668-8393. So if y'all are interested, we definitely hope that you will give a call in and let us know where it's going on in your world and what we can do to uh, inform y'all's going on as well. By the way, we do have listeners sometimes that call in from Phoenix, and we understand that the already hot housing market in Phoenix is heating up even more as workers in expensive cities move for more affordable housing. Though home prices in Phoenix were up um, 31.1% in June from a year earlier, housing in the area was more than hundred thousand dollars below the medium home prices in San Francisco so definitely that's some of the things that are going on and we definitely know that that is happening uh, San Francisco Los Angeles Seattle Portland and Denver so it's below those prices in those areas and a more diversified regional economy is another factor that attracted 25,194 residents to Phoenix last year than most of any US city I've actually got a friend that just bought some property in Arizona so definitely we're checking out what they've got going on as well. So they have just recently moved into that area and are uh, got actually two homes, one in Phoenix and one in uh, the Nevada area as well. Um, definitely it says that um, a U.S. housing reporter at the Wall Street Journal said that once a poster child for the foreclosure crisis, Phoenix housing market is booming again. Why Phoenix median home price of 399900 is up 31.1% in a year and is still more than $100,000 cheaper than those median prices in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Seattle, Portland, and Denver. So I would be interested to see how this plays out and what goes on in that regard. I know I'm not planning to move to the West. I actually like it. North Carolina has always been a North Carolina native and all of that, but definitely amazing to have these great conversations, see people involved in a number of things, including the possibility of making moves and all of that, because definitely we are seeing these kind of motions happening on a regular basis. And by the way, it looks like the young staff is resisting office return. So while older workers are eager to return to their stopping grounds, younger employees are not ready to give up the advantages of remote work, even new hires who don't know what they're missing, according to a recent survey. 55% of millennials said they have doubts about going back, compared to 45% of Generation X and 36% of baby boomers. Executives say the main way to bridge the generation gap is by offering flexible options rather than taking a one-size-fits-all approach. By the way, this is a very interesting approach that we're trying to do on this show because usually I'd be having my running buddy, uh, Mr. Dean, over here to guide things, and we'd, of course, be trying to have some amazing guests and all of that. So I'm going to come back with some more news, but in the meantime, we're going to give you some music because we love having this opportunity to give you some music, including some instrumentals. So I think I'm going to let you all check out a little bit of J. Dilla Flowers right now. So I'll be back with some more news, and who knows whether we'll get anybody to call in, or like I told Dean, this might be an abbreviated edition, but we just want to keep things rolling, so we know that sometimes our fans are looking forward to great conversation. So right now, let's check out a little bit of J. Dilla. But everything that I do is 
are believers and we believe in the higher power other than ourselves because that we step out on faith and he guides us each and every day. I'm like you. I mean, I get up first thing in the morning and I'm like, okay, well, first of all, thank you for the breath of life. I'm still breathing. And secondly, I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel for you. And I leave myself open in order to be able to pay attention to what you Yes, folks, uh, that I would continue with some of the news stories. Even as COVID-19 cases expand and companies like Apple postpone return to office dates, a number of firms are demanding a return to in-person attendance. Many offices nationally are already at full capacity. The Wall Street Journal writes and scores more insist that Labor Day is a fair target for a return. Managers say they're frustrated by 16 months of remote work, feel for workers lower their productivity at home, and insistent teams perform better together in the same physical space. And by the way, I understand that the library who has gotten all excited about their opening and everything has already closed because of things going on around COVID here in Durham, North Carolina. So we're already seeing an impact. So while a lot of folks are thinking that we've made a around the turn corner and are definitely doing much better. There are still uh, lots of concerns about what's going on with COVID and how we can make it even uh, more of a recovery than we have had. So it'll be curious to see what folks have to say about that and uh, their thoughts about that and uh, how they are addressing a lot of these concerns. So there is definitely some things going on in that regard. So we are definitely interested in hearing what folks have got to say about this. So I'm sorry, um, actually one person, Desert Isaac Schaefer, was saying that they're sorry that employers are demanding that employees return to the office full time. Are they tone deaf? Are they aware that remote schooling may return even to start the school year? And are they calculating their turnover costs related to the working mothers who have left their workplace, not to mention those planning the same? So while things may be getting better, there are still a lot of folks that are concerned as well. So. We're going to find out how things are going, and folks are definitely engaged and involved in a number of things. So we're curious to see how people are handling what's going on and what their thoughts are about a number of these things. So if you want to get in touch with us, either me and Dean, and of course we're always looking for 
amazing guests to share their thoughts and what they've got going on in their world. So definitely there's a number of things going on in that regard. And by the way, I understand we might be getting some storms here later on today, at least that's, at least that's what the weatherman had said, but I don't see them anywhere nearby or anything along those lines. By the way, um, how are y'all with writing thank you notes? I know I'm not the greatest, even though I do a lot of events and a lot of things that I'm involved in. I'm not that great at writing thank you notes. I should be much better than that, but I am not. So thank you notes are a surprisingly divisive topic among job thinkers. A poll shows that about 40% of people say they don't always send a note after a job interview, and some never send one. LinkedIn members offer their perspective on the issue in the latest edition of Get Hired. They suggest sending a note, making it handwritten or digital, making it personal, showing that you're interested in the job, and showing that you paid attention to the conversation. So definitely, you know, while there might be some split as to whether you should do it or not, I know that I've got to do better because even the things that I'm doing, I don't always send notes back or let folks know that I am thinking about them and all of that. I know that Jess Smith, who uh, helps the job seekers discover their calling, said he's a huge fan of always sending thank you notes to everyone you interact with in the hiring process. It's another touch point to be more memorable and an opportunity for you to highlight something positive, interesting from the interview, which can make you stand out. Even if you don't get this current role, if you leave a shining impression, people will remember and can contact you for the next role that opens up. And he was even given some personal examples of how that worked for him and everything. So I love to hear folks' thoughts about whether they leave thank you notes or whether they don't leave those thank you notes. And if they don't, why they don't. And, of course, we do know a lot of folks are also paying attention to the concept of whether they should stay or they should quit. And I know I've come up with this term of the great reset, but there is definitely talk of the great resignation. And if the great resignation continues, how can you be sure it's the right time to quit your job? And this is a very important question that I know a lot of people are asking on a regular basis. And Anthony Klotz, a management professor at Texas A&M University, <coughs> studies resignations, tells the Wall Street Journal that most of the workforce is currently experiencing turnover shocks as changes in our lives and jobs prompt us to reassess our careers before deciding to resign from our positions. It is advised to act slowly and think carefully before making a move. And I definitely agree that we need to be cautious in whatever we're doing and consider whether alternatives to quitting may be preferable, such as a change in responsibilities or a leave of absence. Think about how it may affect your ability to secure your next role. So keep all of that in mind and definitely think about these things on a regular basis. So definitely that's just some of the things that things that are going for and all of that. So, you know, one person uh, has been looking at their own job situation and just asking how it impacts what they are going through. So um, definitely this gentleman, Benjamin Crudo, who is a CEO with Diff Agencies, says recently he's been meeting one-on-one -on -one with each member of his team from what I'm hearing, autonomy and purpose are critical. And that's something I've been hearing even a lot around the different networks that I'm part of. So purpose is very important. But there's another ingredient to keeping people around, and that's something we were talking about with the thank you or the no thank you note, which is gratitude. I've seen just how powerful a simple thank you can be. Research has found that recognition has a proud, profound impact on um, retention and culture as a whole. We're currently working on a plan that would institutionalize gratitude to show employees how much they mean to us. Short story, to some extent, losing people is inevitable, whether that's for purpose, salary, etc. But what leaders should focus on and what's actually in our control is that nobody leaves because of the company culture or not feeling appreciated. Uh, so definitely that's something we got to keep in mind and all of that. So on that note, I'm going to bring up a little bit more music, and I hope that the dean is having good times with his meeting, but it was a mandatory meeting, so we know that those things do happen and all of that. And I may come back with some more LinkedIn news very shortly. But right now, we're going to let you check out a little bit of a new show intro that we had for a while and everything. Actually, I think we're not even going to do that. Let's give you a little bit of Onaz and Ultra Black. So we're going to see how much of this we let you check out and all of that. But before we even get to that, I think that I might bring up a uh, little bit of uh, Ninth Wonder. That's right. I'm a fan of Ninth Wonder as well. So let's bring up a glimmer.
Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive. And now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie Stone of the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? Oh, okay. You got a king? Go, Big Dad! Oh, come on! <laughs> this is WWE so Superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to what make it. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Oh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org.
around and because there are a lot of women like that. Yeah. Right. So if you keep it so narrow, then people can be kinder and more respectful to the group. Are you looking to make your next event sizzle? Then you want to get in touch with Lee Entertainment. Mark Lee, the founder of Lee Entertainment, has worked with such notable festivals as the Art of Cool, the National Black Theater Festival, the Bull Durham Blues Festival, and the Durham Center Fest, as well as the Festival of the Eno. And it definitely can provide you with some great entertainers as well as help you make your event sizzle if you're looking forward to trying to have an event in your town. Mark Lee is willing to travel anywhere in this country to make your event sizzle and has entertainers that are also willing to travel as well. So if you're looking for quality entertainment, definitely get in touch at bluesradio at gmail.com.
We've been having some interesting conversations about a number of things going on around the world. And, of course, I've been trying to keep you all informed. Unfortunately, we did not have a guest today, but I still managed to give you all some music and some other things that were happening in that regard. So, you know, always some amazing things happening in the world. Always glad to share what I'm learning about what's happening in the world as well. Of course, we do know that the Olympics have been taking place, and a lot of folks have been checking that out and definitely seeing what was going on in that regard. So definitely, you know, we've talked about some of the things going on with the work uh, situation, and one of those things is that apparently Generation X may be shouldering the jobless crisis. That's because, that's right, it's becoming harder for workers age 45 and older to secure jobs. That is not good news for me because I'm in my late 50s. According to a generation study, especially as the pandemic amplifies unemployment challenges for everyone, CNBC NBC reports that mid-career workers are perceived as having weaker skills compared to younger candidates, despite often outperforming them, pointing to age bias among hiring managers. Many also believe older workers are reluctant to learn new skills, causing 45 to 60-year-old workers to emerge as the most overlooked employee bracket. So uh, definitely that's something that is going on, and I fall right at the end part of that. So that is not good news in my regards. Unfortunately, the good news is that a lot of the things that I am involved in, I am kind of the boss of creating my own situation. So that is good in that sense. So definitely uh, we're hearing a lot of people chiming in on that. As a matter of fact, Albert Fong, a product marketing person, says Generation X workers have often been called the lost generation, sandwiched between baby boomers who were essentially a birth rate shockwave and millennials who will get all the attention. But Generation X rapid digital adoption during the pandemic has accelerated the automation of jobs and worsened underlying ageism, making it harder for mid-career workers to secure roles our society may ignore or deny this happens, but ageism and bias in the workplace are real. It's very clear that once you reach a certain age, it just becomes much harder to access a job opportunity, even though older workers often outperform their younger peers. I've even seen that in some of the jobs that I'm part of. At some point, lower-cost labor walked in the door, and the value of experience went out of the window. And I remember there was a time that folks definitely gave a lot of uh, credence to those that had been in jobs for a number of years and definitely had garnered experience and all of that. So that's just some of the things that are being talked about and definitely things that folks are going to need to look at and be concerned about as we continue these kinds of conversations around the new economy and the new way that things are being done. By the way, I stated earlier that I've watched a couple of the Olympic Games, and that is very true. I've catched some water polo, some volleyball, some swimming, and some other sports. But unfortunately, ratings for the NBC's broadcast of the Tokyo Olympic Games opening ceremony were down 36% from the last Olympics in 2016, according to preliminary figures from NBC Universal, with just around 16.7 million views across all platforms on Friday. The number marks the smallest U.S. television audience for an opening ceremony in 33 years, according to Reuters. NBC's streaming service, Peacock, however, recorded its most watched Saturday this weekend, with viewers streaming 21% more of the Tokyo Olympics than they did of the Rio Games. In other Olympic news, the U.S. won its first gold medals of the 2020 Olympics in swimming after uh, Team USA failed to medal on the first day of full competition. 
France beat the U.S. 83-76 to in their basketball opener at the Tokyo Games, and the U.S. women's soccer team bounced back from its 3-0 opening loss against Sweden with a 6-1 trouncing of New Zealand. So definitely it'll be interesting to see how these things continue and what folks are finding out about the Olympics and if there are any major surprises that come in the Olympic struggles and in the Olympic battles that go on in the sports world. So we'll be very much curious to see what happens in that regard and what people's thoughts are of the Olympics and what's going on in that space because we do know a lot of people are paying attention to the Olympics and very much interested in the Olympic Games. By the way, Philip Morris International has called for a ban on the sale of cigarettes within the decade, similar to that planned by the U.K. government on patrol vehicles. The uh, firm's chairman said such a measure could act as a deadline for makers and encourage a move to alternatives. PMI has said it wants half its turnover to come from non-smoking products and sell smoke-free alternatives such as heated tobacco products. Health campaigners have expressed skepticism about the comments while the firm continues to sell cigarettes worldwide. So definitely it sounds like they're talking about calming down and even some of the things that go on in a product that they actually go around and sell. So I can see what people may be having some skepticism about this campaign and about whether they are serious or not in this regards of actually trying to do things or not. And of course, in terms of personal rights, some people are also concerned about um, mask mandates and whether those mask mandates will make a comeback. So officials, officials urgently pushing to get more people vaccinated as the Delta variant quickly sort of spreads. There are preventative measures like the mask mandate that may be making a comeback in affected parts of the U.S., according to Bloomberg. Already, Los Angeles County has reinstated its mask mandate, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has been under increasing pressure to revisit its mask guidance. For now, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky says only unvaccinated people need to wear a mask, and it is an individual choice for those who are vaccinated. Even though the U.S. is fortunate to have enough vaccine supply to protect every American, the New York Times notes the U.S. has the highest rates of vaccine hesitancy or refusal of any nation except Russia. There is growing consensus within the White House that vulnerable populations, those over 65 and the immuno uh, compromise will need a booster shot, according to the New York Times. So definitely, we are seeing some people that are saying that, that booster shot could be coming as well. So we're very much interested to see how that transpires and what goes on in that regard. And so we're definitely uh, seeing that as of April 24, 2021, the Delta variant was responsible for 0.6% of the cases. So one of the things they were saying is that the CDC continues to post information on which of the COVID-19 variants is responsible for infections here in the USA. And based on the latest CDC posts, the more contagious and more life-threatening Delta variant is responsible for more than 83% of the new cases. And as of April 24, 2021, the Delta variant was responsible for 0.6% of the cases. So we can see that that was a big jump. As of June 5, 2021, Delta was responsible for 10.3% of the infections, and as of June 19th, 2021, the Delta variant was responsible for about 32% of the new cases. By July 13th, it had spread successfully to account for about 62% of those infections. In public health and many other areas, trend lines are important indicators of potential success, failure, risk, and things that need to be done better, manage your risk, and act on opportunities for success. Sure, the numbers may be off a little here and there, but nobody can question the direction of the trend line, and that direction is not good. So definitely it looks like folks may be looking at another wave, and we do know that that does sometimes happen when things are going on, even as we are fighting back and all of that. And, you know, when we're also fighting back and we've got people that are going against the code and they're actually trying to do more vacations and things of that nature, 
that probably doesn't help in the least bit as well. As a matter of fact, one of the other things that they said was a study by UK researchers has revealed an estimation of the level of protection with the Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines against symptomatic COVID-19 infections with the Delta variant. After two doses, the Pfizer vaccine was 88% effective, whereas the AstraZeneca jab resulted in 67% protection. Protection against Delta after only one dose was significantly lower, about 31% with either vaccine. The study published in NEJM um, analyzed the results of the 19 uh 1,000, well, the 19109 symptomatic infections, 4272 of them with the Delta variant, linked, linked to vaccine, vaccination status in the UK public health system. The study highlights again the need for two vaccine doses for stronger protection against the Delta variant. I'm going to be coming back with some more ideas about what's going on with the whole thing happening in terms of uh, what we have going on with the vacations, because we do know a number of our folks are continuing to go on vacations, even though folks are saying that that is not something that we should be doing on a regular basis, and there are concerns among some of our public officials about this. So definitely this is something that I know a lot of people are very much uh, concerned about, and I'd love to hear from our listeners to see if they've got any thoughts about this as well, because we do know <laughs> that a lot of times people are very much concerned about a number of these issues that are taking place. So I'd love to hear what our uh, listeners have to say about what's going on <laughs> in these regards as well. So as I was saying, as far as the vacations with the pandemic, uh, while the pandemic year saw many workers uh, skip vacation, they're taking more of it this year than ever before. According to headhunting from Corn Ferry, almost 80% of professionals say they will use more vacation days this year, and almost half say that it will be for longer than in past years. Meanwhile, 82% plan to check in less while away. It may be high time. A survey by staffing firm Robert Half shows 44% of employees said they're burned out by a year in which working conditions changed even as demands rose for many. So a lot of folks are getting frustrated, wanting to get back on those trips, whether that's trips around the United States, whether that's jumping on a cruise and going on boats, or whether that's taking a plane and going to some of the overseas places, or whether that's having a vacation uh, from one city to another. I do know a lot of folks that have definitely been uh, wanting to uh, get more of that vacation vacation time that they have been missing, particularly during these 18 months or so of COVID. So pre-pandemic, Americans then use roughly a quarter of their annual paid time off, according to U.S. Travel Association research, whereas last year, workers gave up 33% of their vacation time. So taking time off and actually disconnecting from the office remains a challenge for many American workers. But with pandemic restrictions easing and plenty of offices uh, still closed until after Labor Day, many exhausted employees appear to be making a real effort to uh, get those vacations going and to actually enjoy some vacation time. So <laughs> if you're listening and you're interested in going on vacation, we'd love to hear from you. Just let us know some of your thoughts about vacations and whether you're hoping to do more of this as we continue to try to battle what's going on with the uh, pandemic and all of that. So we'd love to hear your thoughts about vacation time and whether it is something that you have been paying attention to or not paying attention to. In some kind of way, we lost the phone. Checking out what's going on, and they may have some thoughts about vacation time 
as well. So definitely would love to hear what our listeners are thinking about vacation time and whether they are hoping to have any vacation time of their own or not. So that's just some of the things that we know a lot of people have been paying attention to and have been very much concerned about and would love to hear from our fans and others as to what they think about vacation and whether that's something that they've been uh, concerned about, paying attention to, and if so, how have they been thinking about dealing with it as well. So I'm going to put on some more music and maybe bring up some stuff around the uh, New York Times and all of that. But in the meantime, let's check out a little bit more of the great sounds that we have here that are available for us to check out as well. So I'm a big fan of uh, Ninth Wonder, so let's check out Ninth Wonder's song entitled Love Never Dies. Thank you. 
just a little bit of the music that you can get from uh, none other than Ninth Wonder, who, of course, is a great force here in our area of North Carolina and all of that. So glad to be able to give his music uh, some of the shine that it well deserves and definitely should be getting on a regular basis. So glad to give them that shine that he truly deserves and definitely has a amazing amount of talent to share with us on a regular basis. So glad that we can give you a little bit of a taste of that. And one of the things that I was going to say is that, you know, a lot of people have been concerned about what's going on with COVID and how COVID is impacting their day-to-day lives. So with that in mind, the restriction on travelers from Europe and other countries is intended to curb the spread of the Delta variant. And therefore, the White House press secretary was letting folks know earlier today that the White House will be keeping travel bans in place. New York City and California have announced that public employees must be vaccinated or face weekly testing. So definitely it looks like that's uh, going to still continue to have an impact on what is going on in terms of our travel and getting out and about. So the Biden administration will continue to restrict entry of Europeans and others into the United States, citing concerns that infected travelers may contribute to further spread of the contagious Delta variant across the country, according to Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, on Monday afternoon. Concerns about the variant had convinced officials not to lift the current travel restrictions on foreigners, according to uh, Ms. Pazaski, some of which have been in place since the beginning of the pandemic. Vaccines remain effective against the worst outcomes of COVID-19, including from the Delta variant. The more transmissible Delta variant is spreading both here and around the world, she told reporters, adding the cases are rising in the United States, particularly among the unvaccinated. The decision is a blow to the travel industry, which hoped that a lifting of the travel ban could increase tourism for the remaining summer months, helping hotels, airlines, and other businesses that had been struggling. But Ms. Pesaski said that it was unclear when the United States would remove the bans completely. I don't have a timeline to predict for you because it's all about what success we have at getting more people vaccinated, getting more vaccines out to the world, and fighting the virus, she said. The United States began restricting travelers from foreigners in January of 2020 when former President Donald Trump restricted some travel from China in the hopes of preventing the spread of the virus. That effort largely failed. But health officials had pressed the Trump had pressed the Trump administration to expand travel bans to much of Europe during the first surge of the pandemic in the spring of 2020, and more countries have been added to the ban as the original virus and several variants have spread rapidly from country to country. And of course, that last administration also used a public health authority known as Title 44 to effectively shut down the southern border to entry, citing worries that immigrants crossing on foot could bring the virus into the country. The Biden administration stopped enforcing the rule for unoccupied children crossing the border alone and for some families. But Ms. Pazanski did say that the Title 42 restrictions, like the other travel bans, would remain for the time being. We have never conveyed or announced a timeline for Title 44, she said, so nothing has changed in that regard. It remains in place and will remain in place as long as that is the guidance from our health and medical experts. So definitely it looks like we're still dealing with folks that are um, still seeing spikes in some of the virus. And definitely, even though some people are thinking that the uh, pandemic is over, it does look like there is still a lot of concern among a lot of people. So therefore, we are still taking some uh, measures that need to be taken. And that's just Mark's opinion and everything. But I am definitely a fan of us being as safe as possible. And I think that my co-host would agree with me on that as well. But we'll ask him when we see him next week and all of that. By the way, don't forget that Californians, for those of you that live out there, will require all state employees and on-site public and private health care workers to be vaccinated, and uh, Governor Gavin Newsom of that state announced that on Monday. This is a requirement to prove you've been vaccinated, and if you have not, you will be tested, Mr. Newsom said. The California move came a few hours after Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York City announced a similar vaccine mandate for all municipal workers take effect by the time schools reopen in mid-September. Last week, Mr. de Blasio announced the vaccine requirement for public health care workers, part of an effort to speed up vaccination as the city faces a third wave of coronavirus cases 
driven by the spread of the Delta variant. State and local officials, businesses, and residents across the country are grappling with either vaccines, which should be mandated, um, and also probably grappling with how to do it as well. The city of San Francisco, several Bay Area counties, the University of California, and various hospital systems around the country have recently announced similar mandates. The new re- requirement will apply to roughly 246,000 state employees and many more health workers in the state, according to Mr. Newsom over there in California. State departments will be expected to begin verifying the vaccination status of all state employees by August 2nd. So that'll be next week. Uh, the verification program for healthcare workers will go into effect on August 9th and by no later than August 23rd. So more than 64% of California residents have received at least one dose of the vaccine, according to federal data. But the speed of incubation, or the speed of getting these vaccinations, has slowed. The number of virus cases in California has risen to more than 6,300 on average per day, more than double the daily average two weeks ago. And by the way, like I said, both California and New York will require to, uh, workers to be vaccinated or to face testing as well. So definitely looks like we are still in the middle of this pandemic, and therefore people do need to be making uh, precautions and all of that. By the way, with even impact in sports, because the National Football League recently announced it could penalize teams with players who did not get vaccinated, and Delta Airlines will require new employees to be vaccinated, but not its current workers. And last week, a federal judge ruled that Indiana University could require vaccinations for students and staff members. So we are seeing it impact a lot of the aspect of society and throughout society and all of that. So definitely there are even some medical groups that are calling for mandatory vaccinations of U.S. healthcare workers. So a group of nearly 60 major medical organizations, including the American Medical Association and the American Nurses Association, called uh, today for mandatory vaccination of healthcare workers. As the highly contagious Delta variant drives a new surge of coronavirus cases, vaccination is an ethical obligation for healthcare workers, the group said in a joint statement. The statement says that all healthcare and long-term care employers should require their workers to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. This is the logical fulfillment of the ethical commitment of all healthcare workers to put patients as well as residents of long care, long-term care, long care facilities first and take all steps necessary to ensure their health and well-being, according to the statement. So definitely looks like a lot of things are going on in that regard, and even the healthcare workers are saying that they see the need as well. As a matter of fact, in New York, for instance, Roughly one in four hospital workers have not yet been vaccinated, according to state data and nationwide. Just 58.7% of nursing home employees have been fully vaccinated, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Some healthcare workers have pushed back against vaccine requirements. A small group of employees sued Houston Methodist Hospital over its mandate. The suit was dismissed last month, and more than 150 workers at the hospital were fired or resigned over their refusal to be vaccinated. So definitely it looks like a lot of these organizations are doing that, including the VA. And we've got a VA just up the road from me here, but they have, uh, the VA has issued an employee vaccine mandate, a first for a federal agency. So the Department of Veterans Affairs will require 115,000 of its frontline healthcare workers to be vaccinated against the coronavirus in the next two months, making it the first federal agency to mandate that employees be inoculated, government officials said on Monday. The move came as concern is growing that the, that the substantial portion of the population that has not been vaccinated is contributing to the rapid spread of the highly contagious Delta variant. While it was a sharp departure from the Biden administration's reluctance to embrace mandates, it was part of a broader shift in which New York City, many hospital chains, and some private employers are deciding that the time has come to make being vaccinated a requirement. So uh, Dennis McDonough, the Secretary of the Veterans Affairs, said in a telephone interview, I am doing this because it's the best way to keep our veterans safe, full stop. The department is one of the largest federal employers and is the biggest integrated health care system in the world. The mandate will apply to workers who are the most uh, patient-facing, including doctors, dentists, registered nurses, physician assistants, and some specialists. Beginning on Wednesday, so that's the day after tomorrow, those healthcare workers will have eight weeks to get fully vaccinated or face penalties, including possible removal. And it looks like we're even expanding the trial 
into some younger kids as well. So at the FDA is urgent. Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna are spending their trials for children 5 to 11. So it does look like there is some push to get folks uh, vaccinated even in the, the younger crowd as well. So definitely it does not look like there is not a lack of news in the whole um, pandemic fight and in this fight against this um, definite enemy that has been going at us for a number of months and all of that. So it does not look like there is a shortage of efforts to try to tackle this on a regular basis. But uh, for folks that are interested, I would love to hear from our guests in terms of they've got thoughts. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show, don't hesitate to get in touch with me at bluesradio at gmail.com. That's bluesradio at gmail.com. So if you get in touch with me, we'll see about getting you on. And I know that I'm talking to a number of future and potential guests, including some folks in the political space. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping my friend Leonardo Williams will come on and talk about his run for the city council, as well as some other people that are doing other races, not just here in North Carolina, but throughout the country. And, of course, we love getting global guests as well. And We know it can be different times zones for where you're at, but we are always willing to accommodate, maybe even do a recording and then bring that up. We love getting guests from around the world as part of Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. And don't forget, this is part of a podcasting network as well. And, of course, you can catch the replays of this show, which featured a lot of music on this particular episode, but you can also catch those replays on the network on a lot of the various um, platforms that we're on, whether that's TuneIn, whether that's Jehovah, or that's, that's I think I said that totally wrong, but you know the one I'm talking about. It's the one, the Geo Saving, Geo Saving, the network out of India, whether that's Stitcher, whether that's Google Play, or a number of the other sources that are out there that allow us to uh, spread our message and to let you check out the various guests that we usually have as well. And of course, we also re air some of other shows of some of our affiliates and associates. So glad that we've got. Um, Jess Everhart is doing her show here on the platform, as well as um, my good friend Russ. And, of course, we've got uh, the Rush Hashtag show that's on here on a regular basis. We've got Omasadi doing her uh, guide to menopause. And we've got a number of other great shows, including some shows around medical issues, because we do have the, uh, the young ladies that do the medical show out of New York. And we've got a number of other shows. So if you go to the platform and see the various shows that we've got you'll see that there's something probably to fit your taste and your interest but we do love getting a variety of shows and we're always even willing to have the possibility of conversations about adding other shows as well but there are some tremendous shows that happen here on a regular basis and of course there are the various other shows that i do as part of the international broadcast media slash pod tv network and include the online dinner party, Mullins Music and Memories with Mark Lee, the radio show with Mark Lee, and, of course, a number of other shows as well. So we're always glad to have those shows and always looking at the possibility of adding new shows in addition. So there's some great program. We even got a program that deals with education, and that was done by a couple of the um, a mother and her daughters and all of that. So we've got some great programs that exist here on this network, and we look forward to having many more conversations with folks and all of that. So definitely some great conversations, and we're always glad to have you folks joining with us as well. So just keep that in mind that there is some tremendous programming. I did want to give a shout-out. I did it on one of my other shows to two folks that we lost. And, uh, you know, we like to honor those people and give them the flowers when they're living, but also when they are legends and people that are part of our cultural community that have passed on, we want to honor them as well. So as we get ready to wrap up everything, I wanted to say, you know, our uh, thoughts do go out to the families of uh, Freeman Ledbetter and to the families of Valerie Whitted. Freeman Ledbetter was a true legend in the jazz community here playing straight ahead jazz, had been talking about trying to set up a jazz club for a number of years, but was also very much involved in the green community for a number of years before that was even a trending topic or even a trending thing. So I want to give a big shout out to the family of Freeman Ledbetter and let you know that our thoughts do go out to you during this time of loss. We know that a lot of times when you lose 
a family member. It is devastating, but he did leave a rich legacy, and it is a legacy that will continue to resonate with the community for a number of uh, decades, centuries, and all of that. And I can say the same thing about Valerie Whitted. Valerie Whitted was involved in our art community here, running her own art gallery, involved in education with her family, running a school, and was doing a number of other things and served on some boards with me, including the Carolina Theater. And, of course, she also worked with um, a number of things that I was involved with. Uh, I know that she had worked at WCOM with the Creative Colorful People, and that was a great program, and I always enjoyed talking to her whenever they would still be there when I would come in to do my blue show, which is still active on that particular station. So always glad to have those folks engaged in the conversation. And, of course, she and her husband also helped bring in Chip Sharon and um, some other folks in terms of music. And like I said, she served on the board of the uh, Durham Art Guild and a number of other arts organizations that was she part of. So both of those folks will be truly missed by us, and we know that they will be missed by many others as well. So we're getting ready to wrap everything up. This has been a truly interesting show since I do not have my partner in crime, Dean, with me and all of that. So uh, definitely we're looking forward to having him back in place and everything on next week. But I managed to get through two hours. Of course, a lot of that was because of musical beds and some of the spots that we have that we can use as well. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go out with one of those spots and another one of those musical beds. I think we'll go out with my friend Nikki Hall and her spot and maybe one from the portfolio group as well. And then we'll get on out of here with some music and definitely we'll catch y'all on next Monday. This is Nikki Hall, founder of Simply Radiant LLC, a woman with great passion and skill to make you look and feel better. Meet me where you are. Let's take it to another level, a new you. See you soon. Call 919-971-6243. Make your place today. Are you enjoying the smoothest conversation in podcasting? Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Hi, this is DJ Smooth Jazz, syndicated radio host and co-owner of Portfolio Group, LLC. Your smooth jazz lifestyle and entertainment group with offices in Durham, North Carolina. Portfolio Group, LLC specializes in promoting the lifestyle of smooth jazz listeners with the promotion of smooth jazz events and the distribution of African-American-owned wines. For more information, PortfolioGroupLLC.com, or you can swing by my secondary site, DJSmoothJazz.com. Now back to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. again next week with more great conversation about things taking place in the world and things that we can be involved in and paying attention to, including the Olympics, including words of what's happening in the White House, as well as what's just happening around the globe, and of course what's happening in our community as well. So um, I don't know, because I didn't step outside, whether we got that rain or not, but I know they were calling for rain today, and I know that we've been dealing with heat, and I'm sure that Dean has been dealing with heat as well. But when we come back next week, we'll tell you how the weather has been going both there as well as here. But on that note, I'm out of here, and we look forward to seeing you again on our upcoming shows, including the online dinner party, which will be taking place on Wednesday between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the International Broadcast Media Network, now known as Pod TV or Public Open Dialogue Television, and all of that. So if you go to podtv.tv, or if you look for the International Broadcast Media on YouTube or some of those other sites, you should be able to find it. And of course, the online dinner party is coming your way between the hours of 
4 and 7. So check out the online dinner party and also on those same platforms. I'll be back up in the morning. Uh, as Steve Rao leads the news program, but I will be one of the panelists and, of course, be a producer of that as well. And, of course, we do have Barbara H. Smith who will be back on Tuesday, and she just came back from Nairobi, Kenya. So I'm looking forward to hearing what she's learned and some of the things that she's going to be bringing to the table in terms of new knowledge. So definitely some great things happening, and I'm looking forward to catching you all on the return trip. But on that note, just a little bit of a sample of some of that instrumental music, and then we're going to get on out of here. <laughs> 